Hey team, I'm gonna shoot a couple videos with uh, Lava Man specifics. Uh, some of you that are watching this have been to the race before and if you have anything to add to this, feel free to put it into the comments. Uh, certainly there'll be some things I miss or some things that I see differently uh, than you. Um, originally I was gonna shoot one video but I have a feeling that it might end up being like 20, 25 minutes. Uh, so I'm gonna break it up. Uh, first I'm gonna talk about some general specifics and then the swim and then I'm gonna come back in a day or two and add a video on the bike and the run. So to begin with, uh, one of the things that I think surprises people, just, they just don't think about it, is that Hawaii is in a different time zone and that's you know, probably obvious uh, to you. Um, but you know, when you're going there, you don't really think about what that means. Myself, I'm on the West Coast and it's typically three hours. Uh, Hawaii doesn't observe daylight savings, so in some years it's been two hours. Uh, typically it's three. So what that means is the first morning that I'm there being a three hour time difference, you know, I'm gonna wake up at four or five in the morning because then my body's clock, it's like seven, eight o'clock in the morning. So you wake up at four or five, you're kind of bouncing off the walls, you're ready to go, ready to go do something. Uh, the good news is that on race day, you know, especially if you haven't been there in a full four or five days to get acclimated, it's really easy to get up on race day. You know, normally when you're doing a race and the race is at seven, you're getting up at four or 4.35, you know, that comes pretty early and you're a little bit tired. In this case, I think that works to our advantage. Uh, so take, you know, look at where you're coming from. I think like people from Alaska, it may be only one hour difference, so it might not be a big difference. I know there's some people on the team in Hawaii, so obviously they're gonna be the same time zone. Uh, some of you though are coming from the East Coast and you might experience a six hour um, time difference. And so, you know, the first night that you get there, really think about what time you're gonna try to go to bed. What's gonna happen is it's gonna be, you know, like five o'clock in the evening and it's gonna be 11 o'clock in your body and you're gonna be really tired. And what that means is if you go, you know, you go to bed at five o'clock, you're probably gonna wake up at one o'clock or two o'clock. So you may sort of force yourself uh, to stay up a few hours later, maybe go to bed like at, you know, eight or nine so you can get you know, more sleep and not wake up at one or two in the morning. Okay, so that's definitely something to think about. Um, it's warm, obviously, which is nice. So what that means is, especially like myself living in the Pacific Northwest, normally when I do a race, you may have a lot of layers that you're going to the race with. Um, the morning of the race, it's, you know, probably 80 degrees out at 5 a.m. And so um, you don't really typically need a lot in the way of layers to stay warm, warming up for the race. Um, you're gonna want a headlamp uh, or a bike light on your uh, bike that you can take off really easily. The morning of the race, when you're riding a transition at maybe it's uh, 4.45, 5.30, it's dark out. And you wanna be able to light up the road in front of you, uh, just so you don't have any accidents, mishaps, um, you know, little potholes or you know, things in the road. Um, so that's a really good thing to have. Also when you're setting up your transition, it's, they have lights, they have floodlights, but it can be a little bit helpful looking in your bag. So if you remember, pack a headlamp, I think that's a good tip. The other thing I would say is uh, make sure you have like a little sling bag, backpack, something that's secure, um, or a backpack, depending on how much, if you're wearing a wetsuit or not wearing a wetsuit. You know, I have seen people ride down to the race with the legs of the wetsuit over their body here. And, and then a bag over that. The reason I say have a bag is I've seen this just about every time I've been there, is that somebody will have all their transition clothes just in a little grocery bag with handles and they'll be riding their bike and the grocery bag will be hanging from one of their handlebars. And as they're going, the grocery bag gets caught in the front wheel. And I, I literally have seen people go straight over their handlebars the morning of the race and head first into the pavement. Um, luckily in both those cases, they're banged up they were able to race, but it's not how you want to start your race morning, right? So make sure that you have, you know, you might be wearing your running shoes down there or your cycling shoes, um, but you might have like, you know, your little bag that like maybe with flip flops and a change of clothes for afterwards, all your race gear, you'll be wearing your helmet so that doesn't have to go in the bag. So the bag typically doesn't have to be that big of a bag because if you're wearing your helmet, you have one pair of shoes on, uh, but you do have to carry some stuff with you, right? Uh, so just do it in a very safe manner so you, you just don't want to start off your day, you know, crashing your bike for obvious reasons. Um, let's get into the swim. I think the biggest uh, fear that people have is that, you know, the race is in the ocean and so you, it just conjures up these images of five foot surf and really rough water 
and uh, really scary. But the bay, it's actually, it's in, a, it's in a bay, and so it's pretty protected and it's very calm. Sometimes people will get there because the wind is going to be the biggest factor really in the whole race. The, the, the temperature is you know, consistent year over year, uh, but there's times when it's more windy and times when it's less windy. Doesn't affect the swim as much. There have been a few, one or two years where the swim has been a little bit more rough than normal. But what can happen is you, you get into Hawaii and you go down and you check out the race start and it's two, three in the afternoon, but the trade winds have come up and so the bay looks rather rough and you, and you look at that and you go, it's not so calm like I was told, right? And so that can kind of freak you out a little bit. What you want to do is make sure that you go down and check out A Bay at seven in the morning and then even go for a swim and what you'll see is it's very calm. I've done Lava Man twice, I've been there as a coach uh, seven or eight times and Really, even on the year that it was maybe a little bit windy, I've been in lakes uh, that have been far rougher and far more choppy um, than A Bay. So, in general, it's going to be nice, calm swim. Uh, it's very clear water. You'll uh, people you might see sea turtles uh, in the race. You know, somebody saw a manta ray. Those are the big ones, kind of like stingrays, but they don't sting you. Uh, fish. Uh, you swim over a coral reef on the way back in. The and the practice before the race. Uh, there's a sort of a buoy about a quarter mile out and there's always sea turtles out there so I always go out there and I just kind of hang around and, and uh, see if I can spot sea turtles you usually see like five or six of them sometimes they're down sometimes they're right at your face level so that's a really cool thing to do in the, the day or two before the race um, if you go practice which I highly recommend go at the time of the race and the reason for that is because that way you can get an idea of where the sun is coming up and especially as you're coming back in. So the way the course works, uh, you enter on this side, this is the beach here, and you swim out, you go around a buoy, so it's, a, it's sort of like a, a triangle uh, that doesn't come together. But on your way in here, the sun is coming up and it's pretty much right in your eyes. And a lot of times you can't even see the buoys. Um, and so what I figured out in the race is you can actually use the sun as a navigational tool. So if you have a tendency to veer left or right, um, what I figured out is this is my nose, this is my eyeball. If the sun is sort of right here on this uh, left side of my nose and kind of in between the center of my eyeball and my nose, if I keep the sun right there, then I'm swimming directly in towards the beach. And so what does that mean? Well, if the sun drifts over here, now all of a sudden I'm swimming right of where I want to finish. And if the sun drifts on the right side of my nose, then it means that I'm swimming left of where I want to finish. So. Um, the first year I was doing it, it was, it was really hard to, it was blinding almost and I couldn't figure out where I was going and then sort of at the, towards the end, I was, made that, you know, in my brain, I'm like, oh, I just, I can use the sun to figure out where I need to swim. So, but you're going to be able to practice that better, you know, at that same time that the sun is coming up because it's in the same position. It also gives you a better idea of what the water, um, not really temperature is going to change much, but water calmness. Uh, I don't know if calmness is a word, but that's what I'm going with. The conditions of the water, right? How rough it is, how smooth it is. Um, so you can get a feel for that. On the day before the race, on Saturday, Team in Training brings in some lifeguards and has a big organized swim. And definitely take advantage of that because you get a little bit better chance to maybe practice swimming in a group. Uh, the one thing about Lava Man, they do a bunch of waves. So you want to think about your start position. If you're a faster swimmer, say faster than 130 per 100, you're going to want to be towards the front of the group, even if your group is only 100 people. If you're faster than 120 pace, you're going to be, want to be right at the front because you're going to be you know, in the top 5, 10 people of your wave. If you're very new to swimming and you're very nervous, even if you're a fast swimmer and you're nervous, what I would do is start out here on the right side because that way if it gets congested, you can just swim out here a little bit and you can get away from the fray. Um, if you're more of a confident swimmer, then you can start more along the buoy line. Um, but if you're swimming, say, closer to two minutes per hundred, you want to sort of hang out at the back here. You don't want to get caught up in the middle because if people swim over you, they can be very scary. The other thing with Lava Man is that waves go off, I think, every five minutes or so. And so what happens is if you're a fast swimmer and you're not in the very first wave, you're gonna be swimming along and all of a sudden you're gonna bump into this person in front of you that was in an earlier wave because you caught them. 
And a lot of times there's pockets. And so you have to be aware of that so that you just don't keep running into people. You can look up a little bit and you can pick your line and maybe swim, you know, a foot or so outside so you can pick your way through this little group of swimmers. And depending on where you, where you swim, um, so like I'm a, I'm a pretty fast swimmer as far as triathletes go. My lava man time is probably like below 23 minutes. Um, I, would, I would go through at least three waves. So three different pockets of people. Um, so keep that in mind so it doesn't startle you. The same thing goes if you start in whatever wave you start in. If there's a wave behind you, there's a decent chance that there's somebody in that wave. You know, if you're a slower swimmer, um, that somebody may come up behind you. So you may be swimming along peacefully and all of a sudden this big arm whacks you on the, you know, on the back or the legs and it kind of freaks you out. So just knowing going into the race that you may have to pick off people in front of you and there may be coming people coming up behind you, just being aware of that will help with your swim. Um, the transition, you come out of the swim and then you run up the beach, I don't know, maybe maybe 40 yards or so, and the timing mat is up on the beach. Uh, so the time and the swim, just for race purposes, isn't necessarily right when you come out of the water. It's more up the beach a ways. Um, and that, you know, can come to be with that if you're really pushing up against the, the time cutoff. Um, transition, it's probably maybe a quarter mile run from the beach. Some of it's carpeted uh, up to the transition area. And you can, get, you can get that layout, you know, the day or two days before the race and get an idea of how far of a run that is. Um, so those are my tips for the swim. I may have missed something, in which case just uh, put the questions in the comments and then I'll answer them as best I can. Again, for those people who have been to the race before, um, if you have any general recommendations on, you know, sort of the leading up to the race um, types of things versus also maybe some comments on swim, uh, what you experience in the race, hey, feel, feel free to add them, right? Um, you know, there's there's more than one person that has something to add here to this topic. All right, and then the next video, I'll come back and do one for bike and run. Thanks.